So last time we talked about projection painting, we looked at it through the context of texture extraction. And using this method, we could pull textures from any kind of surface, including a curved one. But really, that was just an introduction to projection painting. So if you haven't already seen that, I do recommend watching that video first. But today I want to look at projection painting from another angle. And our goal is going to be taking video that's filmed like this and stitching it into a panoramic image that looks like this. So this is another type of thing that projection painting is very useful for. You can make panoramas or or even extend this to spherical environment maps. And the main idea for this workflow is we're going to convert our video into an image sequence. Then we're going to do a tripod camera track on that sequence with minimal projection error. Next, we're going to render out the sequence without lens distortion and make geometry we can project on. And finally, we're going to do our projection painting to stitch together the panorama. So let's hop into Blender and get started. So again, the first thing we need to do is convert our video into an image sequence so it's nicer to track. To do this, I'm going to go over to the video editing workspace and add in the movie clip that I want to turn into a panorama. And you see that it's playing nicely, but there's a couple things we need to fix. First thing is I'm going to find the last frame of this video and set that as our project endpoint. And you can do that just by copying over this frame number. Next thing is in the render tab under color management, we need to set our transform to default. This just prevents Blender from changing the color of the video. Then in the output tab, I'm going to set this to export out as a JPEG sequence at maximum quality and just create a folder for that. And at this at this point, you can render out the animation with Control F12, but because I'm using an MTS video file, I know it's going to run into some issues. And to prevent those, I'm going to mess with the proxy and timecode settings. So enable this proxy and timecode checkbox and set it to 100% at maximum quality, and then just change the timecode index to record run. And once that's all set up, we can just hit rebuild proxy and timecode indices. And basically, this just forces Blender to look at our video as going one frame at a time in order, which prevents any glitching that we might get during our render. And now we just hit Control F12 to render out this animation. So what we've done is converted our video into an image sequence. And now that we've done this, let's move on to camera tracking. I'm going to open up a new Blender project, and this time let's actually give it a name and save it. And now head over to the Movie Clip Editor and import in the sequence that we just rendered. And of course, we want to match our project settings to this clip, so hit Set Scene Frames to match the duration, and we can use Prefetch to load the sequence into memory. Now one of the benefits of using an image sequence is that it's frame rate independent. So I'm just going to head over to the output tab and choose 30 frames per second. And just like last time, we still need to head over to the render tab and under color management, we're going to change our transform back to default. And now everything is set up to actually begin tracking the scene. Now, because this is a projection painting tutorial, I'm going to really speed through all the tracking. But if you want to see it all, it will play at the end of the video only slightly sped up. And also, if you want an in-depth look on the 3D camera tracking process, I do have have a two-part tutorial series on that, so just use that as a refresher if you need it. So what I'm doing here is putting down a bunch of trackers until I have eight trackers throughout the whole shot. In this case, this is very easy to do because we have lots of crisp details and features to track. And once all our trackers are down, we're going to head over to the solve panel and make sure to enable the tripod checkbox. And what this means is when we camera solve, we want a solution where the camera is staying still and just pivoting around. I'm also going to change our refine option to focal length and K1 and K2 distortions. Make sure to do this step because it's going to be very important when we undistort our sequence. And when we go for our camera solve, we get a reprojection error of around 2.9, which definitely is not ideal. So the rest of this tracking process is really about lowering our solve error as much as possible. And there are a bunch of methods to do this, but really I'm just playing around with the track weights and deleting any bad frames. And again, if you want to see this whole process, it will be at the end of the video. But by the end of this, I managed to get a solve error of around 0.9, which is significantly better than what we had before. And now what we have to do is set up our scene. So in the lower window, open up the 3D viewport, and then we can hit set up tracking scene. And for this, we can delete everything except the camera, and then we're just going to center it to the world origin and orient it more nicely. And the reason we're doing this is it's going to help us with projection painting later on. But even though we moved our camera, you can see that everything is still tracking on very nicely. Now remember that when we did our solve, we had Blender calculate our K1 and K2 values, which means that we have our lens distortion calculated. And in the camera options, we can toggle the render undistorted checkbox on and off to see what that looks like. And when we're doing our projection painting, we're going to want to use this undistorted version. So the version where all the lens distortion is gone. So to undistort our sequence, head over to the compositing workspace and you'll see we already have this node graph. And these nodes were generated when we hit setup tracking scene from before. And we only want some of these nodes, so I'm just going to get rid of the rest of these and then hook up our undistortion node to the composite. 
So we have our image sequence being undistorted, which is what we're going to end up rendering out. So in the output tab, I'm going to set this to export as a JPEG sequence at maximum quality and send it to the same folder as before. And when all that's ready, we can hit Control F12 to render out this animation. And now we're finally ready to begin projection painting. So head over to the layout workspace and what we want to do is add some geometry to project onto. Now in a perfect world, we use a sphere for this, but the UV unwrapping gets pretty messy. So instead I'm going to go for a cylinder. And really this is the next best option and it's really easy to work with. So in the top view, we're just going to scale this up so it's touching our trackers and we can delete the top and bottom caps of the cylinder. And really we still don't need all these remaining faces. So I'm just going to select all the ones that appear in the camera view and then invert with control I and delete. And this is way too tall. So let's scale this down on the Z axis and make sure that it's still always covering our frame. And when you're happy with how that's set up, just make sure to apply object transform, which is going to be important for UV unwrapping. So at this point, we have a segment of our cylinder, which we want to project a panorama onto. And the rest of the steps are pretty much our normal projection painting. So now let's head over to the UV editing workspace. So just like last time, we're going to rename our UV map to original and give our cylinder an unwrap with U. And since we want our UVs going horizontally, just rotate the island by 90 degrees and hit pack islands with rotation disabled to fix that. And something to still look out for is that our UV island may be upside down, and in this case it is, so just rotate by 180 degrees. So now we need to create an image to store our panorama texture, so just create a new image with a convenient name. And for the resolution, choose something with a large width and a small height because that's how our panorama should be turning out anyways. So now our image is loaded in, but clearly our UV space isn't being optimized. And to fix that, all we have to do is move these vertices up. So now we're done with our original UV map, and we need to add in a second map to project from. And in this new map, we're going to do a project from view using the camera view. And even though the result looks pretty messed up, it's not going to affect our projection painting. So now let's head over to the texture paint workspace. And we're going to set up everything just like we did in the last video. So set the mode to single image with the panorama image we created and assign our original UV map. And then in the clone brush, we're going to enable clone from paint slot set to project UV map. And what we're about to do is basically just projection painting from a bunch of different frames. And we're going to be using our undistorted images for this projection. So let's just import them all in and make sure to disable detect sequences so they all come in separately. Now, since we're on the first frame in our project, I'm going to set the clone brush to use the first undistorted frame. And when we begin painting, you're going to notice that nothing is changing. However, when we go over to the other side of the cylinder, the projection painting does seem to work. And this just means that our normals are pointing outwards. So the simple fix for this is just to select all the faces and flip normals. And now the painting is working from the front, but you can see that we're getting some heavy distortion. Now remember this is happening because projection painting requires a lot of geometry to work with. So just like last time, we can add in some loop cuts with Control R, and now everything works perfectly. And since we did our camera tracking before, we can go to a different frame and just repeat this process. So just update your project UV map with another project from view, in this case on frame 64, and then head back to the texture paint workspace and make sure that we're painting using the 64th undistorted image. And the reason this is lining up so well is one, because our camera track was so good, and two, because we undistorted the images. So the better you do this, the easier it's going to be to hide the seams. But if you want even better results, we can of course just go back a couple frames and paint over the seams using a new projection. So again, all you have to do is update your project UV map with the project from view and then change which source image you're painting with. And all we have to do is keep repeating this process all the way down the cylinder. And you can see that each step is filling in more and more of this panorama. And once you're happy with the results, you see that in the image editor, we have the flanned out version of this panorama. Now, obviously we still have some issues around the edges of this image, but you can either just crop that out or what I do is paint over it while we're still in paint mode. And once this image is done, we can just save this out and we have extracted a panorama from the video. So that's it for the second projection painting tutorial. I'm still going to make one more video about projection painting where we use it in another application, but that's all I have for today. And for those of you who want to see the camera tracking process in full, it will play in just a second, but I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.